All right. Let's see here, guys. Welcome. Um, all right, so today is the day we're going to answer your questions related to the 30-day challenge. So hope you're doing well. Um, I am going to see if I can find something right here. All right, we got uh, quite a few people on there. So a um, couple things I want to talk about. And uh, I'm going to talk about... And then I'm going to answer some questions. Um, so let's just see what we have. All right. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, someone asked some questions about um, exercise. What's the best exercise um, for mental health, for brain health? Um, that's going to be aerobic exercise and that's the type that involves a lot of oxygen. So if you do like a short type of, um, high intensity interval training and it's not that much volume, you're not going to necessarily get enough oxygen. But if you're doing biking, swimming, um, wrestling, sports, you are going to ma massively spike the oxygen. That's going to actually help, help your brain the best. It's going to slow down the aging. You can even stimulate uh, neurogenesis, which basically will increase the brain cells. So that's cool. And um, let me see if there's another question here. There's actually a study that shows it'll increase your IQ, which is amazing. Let me see where I had some other questions here. Oh, yeah. Someone, someone asked a question, why does keto have such a bad rap? Well, I think it actually has a good rap, but <clears throat> there are a couple things about it um, that are valid, but you, I need to explain what, I'm, what, what I mean by that. If you take um, a lot of the research on the ketogenic diet, way back when they did a lot of uh, studies with children with epilepsy, they studied something called traditional or um, classical um, the ketogenic diet. They didn't, they didn't do the version which is healthy keto. It's like this very, very medical version, low carb, but the ingredients included mayonnaise, oils, soy oils. They had this uh, thing, this uh, canned powder that was um, casein and, you know, just like something you'd feed a rat. Um, the, you'd have tons of whipped cream and then diet soda like not a lot of vegetables, not, not a lot of organic foods, a lot of GMO type stuff. And with that comes a lot of problems, constipation, um, possible kidney stones, gallstones, um, low calcium, low magnesium, high cholesterol, fatigue, hypoglycemia, things like that. So what you wanna do is you want to um, do the healthy version. Um, but I will say that that's, if you look at some of the research for epilepsy, that's pretty much the side effects, simply because they're not differentiating, they're not doing the healthy version. Those researchers that um, put people on, on these programs, they meet at different keto conventions in Europe, and if you saw what they eat, like, they're totally removed from keto. They think it's like this thing over here for certain medical conditions, but not for themselves. They're, they're eating like junk food, and uh, they don't really see the big picture. Uh, when you do keto the healthy way, um, you don't get those symptoms. You don't. I mean, I don't know a lot of people are getting those symptoms uh, if they do it correctly. Um, okay, it's keto and stomach pain. It's another question that uh, people are asking. A um, couple reasons for that. When you start keto and you get stomach pain, that simply means you're just not drinking enough fluids. Um, because you lose a lot of fluid with keto and um, you need to put that back. And I'm talking about not just water, but electrolytes with that. The other thing too is if you're consuming a vegetable fiber, um, it's going to suck up a lot of water too. 
And if you're not drinking enough water with or liquids with that fiber, it can uh, be kind of uh, difficult to eliminate and you can get constipation from that and, and bloating and pain and things like that. The other one is um, sugar alcohols. That's a big one. Uh, the other one is just too much fat and you're doing too many keto bombs with too much fat. Um, you're not used to it or you're doing MCT oil, which is the, you know, you have to be able to digest that fat. So these are just things that um, are potential problems for stomach pain. Uh, but don't forget to uh, spike your, your fluids on that. All right, let's see if I can see this right here. Okay, keto and gallstones. Um, gallstones do not come from eating too much fat. Gallstones come from a super concentrated cholesterol because there's not enough bile. The key thing is the bile deficiency. If you're deficient in bile, uh, then the cholesterol will start accumulating. That's really what it is. And what stimulates cholesterol, uh, bile is saturated fats. So if you actually, people that actually have low fat diets, they get they higher risk for kidney, uh, gallstones. So um, you need more bile to prevent stones. Keto does not cause stones. Now, let's say you're doing fasting. Uh, is that gonna be a problem? Well. First of all, um, you're, you're, you still, fasting does not deplete your bile because you're not eating. So it's just sitting there, it's concentrated. So the bile in the gallbladder is like 20 times concentrated than any other place. So you're not going to develop a stone when it's that concentrated because um, it's that concentrated bile that will keep the stones from developing. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay, people with, um, it says, blue spots on the top of the feet. I think that's just a circulation problem. If you look in the lower part of your legs and there's red spots or blue spots, that's the venous blood that's accumulating that you need to actually um, do something to get more circulation. The red spots um, that form in the back of your arm um, that could be a subclinical vitamin C deficiency uh, because it ca it's, it's called um, follicular hemangioma, I think. And where there's basically like a little um, um, blood vessels are bursting at the follicles in the back of your arm or the legs. And you can also have like these purple little spots. There's other causes, but vitamin C deficiency could be one. And that's uh, kind of a common, common one. All right, let's see here. Someone asked about the summit. Okay. Um, I am actually going to the a summit, the, the low carb Denver summit in March. I'm going to be there, uh, one of the speakers. And I'm also, we're just planning now the new summit coming up in August. I hope you guys can make it. I was just telling, I just got off the phone with Chuck, uh, Chick Korea. He is a famous jazz musician and and um, he just watched one of my videos, so I was just explaining to him ab about fasting. But um, it's, and I told him, I said, what's nice about the summit is I finally get to meet you guys on the other side because all day long I'm doing videos, but I don't really see who you are. So it's real a blast just to meet everyone in person. So we're gonna do the summer a sum summit at the end of August, the 29th and 30th of August. You have some amazing speakers. You're going to love it. I uh, hope you guys can make it this time. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's see if I can read this here. Something left rib while fasting. Oh, so you have pain in your left rib while you're fasting. Um, I think that I would increase your fluids and with salt. That's what I would do. Because you're blood sugars, um, you're, you're, you're not eating, so you're fasting, and you're taking the pancreas, and it's finally chilling out. The other thing that you can do is you can take your hand and massage underneath your rib cage on both sides. That will help to mobilize the, sometimes the congestion that's occurring there. All right. You sound like you care. I do care. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. 
I'm trying to uh, find an easy question because some of you guys are at, like you have histories of things. Okay, lower back pain. Um, what do you do for lower back pain? Usually, typically get, people get low back pain because they're sitting all day, um, but you lose the curve in the lower back. I would, there's a couple things that you could do. There's a muscle, the quadricep, that's in the front part of the thigh. Um, that needs to be stretched. Usually that's gonna be tight, and that's gonna actually throw an imbalance with your lower back. Um, so I would stretch the quadricep. You'd have to take your ankle, bring it in. You can lay in the stomach and arch up, but you want to stretch the lower legs, usually the quadricep, which is the front part, and that's gonna help the lower back tremendously. You can also take your, your hands and press them about an inch below your belly button and on the left and right side and press on the inside of the abdomen and that seems to loosen up the muscles in the lower in the inside of your pelvis that just take that back and just relax it so um, that's what you can do fasting also helps too can you say hi to Della hi Della Okay, chiropractor told me cholesterol can be from the thyroid issue. Yeah, if your thyroid is slow, um, you can actually develop high cholesterol because everything is sluggish with, a, with a hypothyroidism. But since you brought that up, if any of you have thyroid problem, a hypothyroidism, and you have alopecia, okay, this is for you. Um, all you need to do is take more zinc. Zinc, you know, there's several trace minerals involved with the thyroid. Iodine, of course. Selenium with the conversion from T4 to T3. Iodine for the production of T4 and T3. Because the T3 and T4 are basically the iodine molecules. Um, but copper is involved. But zinc is involved in the, in the conversion or the activation from T4 to T3. As well as the production of of T4 and thyroid stimulating hormone. So it does, double, it does two things. Without enough zinc, your thyroid cannot work. Without enough zinc, prolactin, testosterone will not work. So zinc has like 200 different functions in the body for the immune system. Uh, a loss of smell and taste is a zinc deficiency. But here's the thing, if you have a thyroid problem and you have hair loss and you're taking your medication, that's fine, but take some zinc and watch your hair. It'll, it'll start coming back. Plus, you'll actually, your thyroid will do, you'll do much better with that. It needs the trace minerals. So the best food, um, can anyone guess what the best food for zinc would be? Let's see if you can guess that correctly. Okay. Someone says, every time I take uh, um, electrolytes, I feel kind of groggy. What, what happens is that um, um, you probably need more salt. Salt, because there's one thing in electrolytes that I don't have. It's uh, sodium, very much sodium. So that's what I would do if I were you. Um, but um, to offset that and then take a very small amounts, um, that's what I would do. But... Speaking about energy, most of the potassium is in your skeletal muscle. Um, it's there for a reason because it's involved in the sodium potassium pump, which is the pump that pumps like 24,000 sodium ions outside the, the cell and 18,000 of potassium inside the cell. So if we take the difference between 24,000 24,000 and 18,000, you have 8,000 left, right? So there's a difference of 8,000 positive. So in other words, it makes an electrical difference and it makes the cell have voltage and it makes the cell have electrical properties because that's the purpose of that pump. And then what happens is that, that uh, triggers the nerve and the muscles to contract. And it gives you um, a lot of energy well, it gives you a lot of um, muscle power and, and endurance, but it, it sucks a lot of energy from your body. So um, there's two things that are gonna help you. If you take 
potassium or electrolytes and you feel tired, either you need more or you need less. That's what I would do because you're actually causing this, uh, this change in the physiology. And usually you, most people are deficient in potassium. Subclinically, it doesn't show up in the blood test, but they have a major deficiency with that. All right, so there was a question. I don't think I got to. All right, let's see here. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. The answer, okay, you guys are getting it right. It's shellfish. That has the most zinc. Organ meats also have it, but shellfish is the best thing for that. Um, this is another reason why people that take um, oysters or clams or you know other types of um, even seafood, they they definitely feel stronger. Um, they just feel better. So you may need to take zinc. What depletes zinc is of course high carbs, also breads because it has the that bran, that fiber in bread, in the grains, um, it has a lot of something called phytic acid, which blocks zinc. Also, if your stomach is not acid enough, you won't be able to absorb zinc. All right, let's see. Um, Okay, so I'm slowly uh, dying. Okay, someone wanted to know if I do sessions with people. I, I really don't do sessions with people. I want, I want them to watch the videos to learn on themselves because what I'm going to do if we do a session is I'm going to tell you the same thing to everyone. I'm going to say, get on healthy keto and intermittent fasting. Do it and um, absolutely... Um, Get those basics implemented first because it's not going to work if we try to fix a remedy or using a remedy with some type of symptom. you got to get these basics in. Um, someone said, what type of exercise do I do? Um, I do, um, right now I'm doing a lot of um, exercise with body weight, a personal trainer. So we're doing a lot of pull-ups and push-ups and different uh, angles and uh, uh, a lot of different exercises with my own body weight. I like that. It's really, really hard. It makes you very, very sore, but um, it's easier on the joints uh, if you're over the age of 50, which I'm almost 55. Um, someone said, can I do keto if I'm a diabetic type one? I absolutely need to do keto if you're type one. Um, the need for insulin will go down, and that means that you will, um, you'll, have to, you'll be able to take less medication and control your blood sugars, which means you'll have less uh, complications from the medication because there is side effects from, from insulin. Okay, someone says I have surgery. No, I, I have gallstones. I don't want surgery. Well, what, I think you should take purified bile salts. There's something that I use called gallbladder formula. You can take that. Um, you want to... Um, Now think about this, there's two scenarios here. You have a lack of uh, bile salts and you have too much cholesterol. So maybe what you do is you kind of cut down your fats a little bit and you take more bile salts and then that will dissolve it. But here's the thing, you want to recycle the bile salts. So you want to, um, you want to um, take pro probiotics because you need more bacteria to help facilitate that uh, recycle, uh, that recycling process. And uh, that way you can um, get more bile, dissolve the stones, and do the manual flushing that I talk about. And the video is called, do a search on this, gallbladder and liver flushing. It's very powerful. Okay, someone says, I love the channel. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, someone says, I need help with the piriformis syndrome. Um, that's a muscle in your buttocks. Here's a little secret with the piriformis. Um, it's a little muscle that goes lateral, uh, like, this way. Um, you need to get someone on the opposite side. So if it's on the right side, get someone on the left side. 
to press into your butt, stimulating the piriformis on the mirror image side, the good side, that doesn't hurt. And that thing will go right away. Someone says, do I drink a six pack? Um, actually, um, no, I don't drink beer, but in college, I did drink 24, uh, 24 cans of beer at one time. That was the first and last time I ever did that. Um, but I, it makes me tired. All right, so let's see here. I am down doing the low carb diet. Wow, to 125 kilograms since I haven't moved. Oh, you're, you're, you haven't moved, why? Okay, so I did a video on that, if you plateau. And what you have to do is you have to, first thing is check your carbs, number one. Number two, you want to um, extend your fasting longer. Number three, you want to add exercise. Next one, you want to re reduce your stress, get more sleep, and also find out what type of weakness you have. If you have some type of disease or some health problem, then fix that. It could be an inflammatory condition. It could be a thyroid issue. Okay, someone wanted to know... Um, I'm slightly low. They're asking about um, sun exposure. Um, so there's some controversy on this, like melanomas, skin cancer, the most common type. Um, some people say well, you have to avoid the sun, but other people say that everyone's deficient in vitamin D, so you need the sun, so it's very confusing. Um, here's the data, and I'm going to release a video on this to show you the research on it. 69% um, of people on this planet are have vitamin D insufficiency. And um, here's the data. If you get a moderate amount of sun, like uh, a non-burning sun exposure, that actually decreases the risk for melanoma. Versus getting a sunburn will double your risk of getting a melanoma. So... That's the data on that. Plus, vitamin D actually supports it as well. Can I uh, use white uh, uh, vinegar instead of uh, apple cider vinegar? Yeah, you can do that. It'll, it'll still work because it's not really the nutrients in the apple cider vinegar. It's the acetic acid. How do I keep my brother on track? I lost 48 pounds, 58 days with keto, OMAD, but they can't stick with it for more than a day. How can I help them? Well, there's three things that I, I like to make it simple for people. I would recommend um, providing um, some substitutes from the food they eat. Um, the three things are this. Um, do not eat unless you're hungry. Like, you really got to follow that rule. The snacking is a killer. And then um, the other thing is um, at, at each meal, have a big salad first. So that way um, you'll get the potassium and magnesium and you'll be very satisfied and that you'll eat a little less protein with that as well. It's more filling and it's going to help you. Um, so you want to get those greens in there because if you actually do keto, not correctly, and you're doing like chicken wings and more protein, but you don't eat your vegetables, you're going to just be craving. You're going to be hungry. You're going to get off, get off of it uh, quicker because you're not going to be as satisfied. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, and also you want to have high quality food, especially the fats, not some like dirty keto version. All right. I'm afraid I'm getting sick of salad. Well, try, try other types of vegetables, but you know, have some. Guys, I appreciate your attention. Next week, I'm going to talk to you on Tuesday, not Thursday. Stay tuned. I'm going to go on Facebook right now. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Facebook. I'm going to go on Facebook right now. So I will see you over there, and I will talk to you also next Tuesday. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for your questions.